Hello and welcome to Analyzing Avatar, The Late Airbender. I'm Dan and with me as always is Chris, The Late Airbender himself. How are we doing? Hey. <laughs> All right, you? Hi. Hi. Hey, guys. <laughs> feeling, Chrissy B. Feeling good. Here hey. with another podcast. <laughs> That's the weirdest. I sometimes find that might like, be the weirdest intro this. we've ever done. Do you remember on Steven University we used to do awkward the awkward ending? I, I I'm starting to get the vibe that analyzing Avatar is always going to have like a slightly weird or offbeat opening. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. Like we like, but now when you say to someone that you do a podcast, there's a slight kind of eye roll and a kind of like everyone's doing a podcast. And you're kind of like, look, we've been doing this for seven. You want to go? You you want to go? Look, I I see why you're eye rolling. You know, I've got a podcast, but we've been doing this for seven years. We were we were podcasting before you know the world was podcasting. Yeah. But you can't do that because then they go, oh shit! Wow, you've been seven years. You've probably uh, you've probably got quite a lot of like listens and stuff, haven't you? And then you're like, all right, let's not. Let's not fucking, you know. Let's not go down that route. And then, and time, then, oh, time, oh. Doesn't, time doesn't equal success. <laughs> yeah. Also, as we've discovered on the recent Nothing But Static, time also doesn't e- equal us getting any better at podcasting. <laughs> no. No, yeah. that's very true. Yeah. So anyway, um, we're here. We're doing Avatar. Let's, let's, let's dive in to um, a... Uh, um, should I say, is controversial the word? Um, a, a, a not necessarily classic episode of Avatar: The Last oh. Airbender. Um, there is, there is. This is one of those episodes that sometimes is referred to as as a sort of filler, um, and it doesn't really add a lot. Um, I think it does add some stuff. I, I admit it's one of the least important episodes, but I also think it's quite a fun one. Um, so I get something out of it, if that makes sense, even if it isn't mm. like, you know, pushing any of the major plots forward. Um, and also it's our first glimpse at earthbending, um, which, and how that, you know, how, how the sort of the cool inventive stuff you can do with earthbending. So for me, I, I, I always enjoy this one, even though it's, I mean, it, I do, I will admit it's not one of my favorite episodes of the season, but I also don't think it's quite filler either. But I'm very curious, Chris, as to your thoughts. But oh, I should say, for those who don't remember, this is the episode where Aang first visits Amashu, um, and the king puts him through three trials, um, and then the, he discovers at the end that the the trials are related to. And here comes the lawnmower again. Um, for those who can hear that, I'm sure as it's coming, yeah, right past my window, um, there's a guy that's chosen to do the lawn the lawn mowing in the in the building complex I'm in pretty much now and i thought he was done but he's just come back so if you can hear that i'm I sorry mean, you say that you say that like he's doing it to spite you i mean he he, he probably didn't he probably didn't get the lawnmower out and think oh, i bet one of the guys in the flats is doing a a podcast about episode four of season one of avatar the I last mean, airbender look, Probably said, shouldn't uh, look, mow the lawn right now. Fuck him. Like I sent, I, you know, I sent the yeah. memo. I sent the memo. Everyone should know. <laughs> Do you have anyway. one of those like clerks, what, like a sheet with shoe polish that says, "I assure you, I'm doing a podcast." <laughs> yeah, that's what I need. That's exactly what I need. Um, uh, I mean, he's fine. He's just doing his job. But dear lord, the timing is awful. Um, so yeah, yeah so no, this is so fault. this is the episode where he puts him through all the tests, and then if, if we reveal that boom uh, that the king is actually Boomy, an old friend of Ang's, and he was sort of testing him to help him learn how to think outside of the box, um, essentially. Um, so yeah, uh, what, what do you think, Chris? That's what I'm most excited to, to figure out. Well, controversial episode, so you know, divides filler, you know. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, that's my favourite episode so far. So <laughs> fantastic! <laughs> that's re- that's <laughs> really I don't know interesting. What that says. <laughs> sure. So because I because I personally prefer the Warriors of Kyoshi to this because I feel like it adds up one of the character and stuff. But this one is such a sort of like fun side story, and while it doesn't give us any like deep in, look into Ang's personality or whatever, I could totally see somebody having a blast with this episode because it is very funny. So yeah, here's the thing. I go. I, I'm coming. I'm coming at Avatar for some. Well, one. I think I think it benefits from 
like I was saying last week, I, 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 I wasn't saying I dislike Fire Dude or even dislike they go to a place and get chased by Fire Dude. My point was simply like, I'm kind of hoping they don't do that next week. So I think it benefits from a bit of a respite from that. Sure. Um, I think that works for it. And I'm, you know, I'm only four, five episodes in, but five episodes. Um, but what I'm come, what I'm, you know, what I'm, what I'm, th- what I'm sitting down and thinking when I press play that I want from Avatar is I want some comedy. I do think this one was the funniest episode yet. Agreed. Uh, I want some action. Agreed. I think. I think it's got some of the best action yet. I yep. think that fight scene in particular is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want um, I want a bit of mythology. There's not too much mythology, but there's a fair amount of mythology. As you say, we see earthbending for the first time and see some really inventive uses of that eventually. At the very first moment of earthbending, you think it's airbending, I must say. <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> it's just like they throw the rocks up and I'm like, are they? I thought this dude was the last airbender. Why are they airbending? And then I'm right. like, oh, no, it's it's earth. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> we, so we we get some mythology of, you know, we get flipping, we get a flashback, we get, we get that. I mean, you know, I, I can see some people being like, the whole plot hinders on... He's he's taken them to a place so he can go on a slide. Um, but that's again, <laughs> even that's quite a fun idea. Um, I think it's. I mean, a he bit, took, I he took him well. to the last just... place so he could ride the elephant koi. Like it's 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 very much in Ang's attitude um, to yeah, sort of I, I, dawdle. <laughs> he's young and after I think, all. I, I think your enjoyment of the episode slightly depends on twists as well. A lot of people don't like watching stuff when they know the twist way before the characters do. And you know right away that that dude's an older version of yes. the other guy and his mate. So I imagine some people are sat there frustrated that he's not working that out. Um, yes. But but those things didn't particularly bother me. So I had a, I had a good time. I thought, it was, I thought it contained, like I say, some of the best action, mm-hmm. some good mythology stuff. And some, and some, and in my opinion, the best comedy so far of the series. So yeah, I uh, had a good time, Dan. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, it's I kind of, I mean, dreaded is the wrong word, but I was kind of. This is one of the ones I was least looking forward to covering with you, um, in just because I didn't. I, I, my memory of it, even from a couple of weeks ago when I watched it first with Nadia, was that it was quite a. It it was quite a sort of side episode that you know entertained me. But I didn't know how much there'd be to discuss from that. You know, like how much meat there would be to sort of, sort of chew on, sort of like character stuff. Oh yeah. But it, it, it occurred to me rewatching it prior to it that that's not really what this episode is trying to achieve. This episode exists to entertain, and it does. Like its 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 goal is to is to make me laugh, or or get me excited at the, my first glimpse of airbending. Should I be not sorry airbending, earthbending? Should I be you know should I be a, a new viewer? Um, and also to give us a tiny little glimpse of, of you know, uh, of young sort of pre-war Ang again, you know, and and that's valuable. Like that's that's it's, to dismiss that as filler. I think is a is the same. I would say as when people dismiss on Steven Universe the Towny episodes as filler. Um, yeah, but also like I don't filler filler is a, filler is sometimes used as a negative word. For story of the week, I mean yeah. Blink from Doctor Who. Blink, other than other than coining the phrase "timey wimey," Blink from Doctor Who doesn't have any resonance with the rest of the show. Like, yeah. uh, well, I suppose it introduced the Weeping Angels and stuff. So, okay, a better example is Midnight. Midnight from Doctor Who doesn't yeah. add anything to the rest of the show. You could take that episode out, and you'd never and know the literally. Difference everything would still make sense. Because yeah. they brought the Weeping agent, Angels back, you probably can't do that with Blink. But with Midnight, you could do it. And Midnight is one of the best episodes of that show. Like, Midnight is a is a fantastic episode. Yeah. Same with Human Nature and Family of Blood. Other than Jessica Hines' character coming back for... I don't think that's her name. I always get it wrong. Other than her character coming back for two seconds in the end of time, like, there's no... You could take that episode, but you wouldn't. Fantastic, brilliant episode. Yeah. So, I don't... It's weird to me that when a sh- when an episode is beloved, 
it's a great classic story of the week episode of a show. And when people don't like it, it's filler. <laughs> it's called filler. Like you can call it a bad episode. Yeah. Like, but I don't. I yeah. don't really know what the distinction is between the two. The, the, I, yeah, I think they've become weirdly interchangeable. And I think the origin of classing television content as filler, I think, is partly an anime thing. So, for um, for context, so for example, the Dragon Ball Z manga which is the, the, the weekly sort of or monthly comic that was coming out in Shonen Jump, which is what the show, the anime, is based on, was moving slower than the show would animate, right? So, storyline-wise. So, they would often stretch stuff out in Dragon Ball Z to make, so that, because they were waiting for the next comic to come out, <laughs> right? Or, or, you know, so, so there would be, though there's literally an episode where Goku has to try and get a driver's license not related to anything it's a bit weird and it only exists because they didn't have the next comic they stretch certain plots over many episodes when it really could have been a short one because they were waiting for the for the for the manga to be coming out right so that's my 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 first experience with the notion of filler because that is a lot of that is filler you're they're filling time literally because there's a there's a thing that doesn't exist yet that they need to base that they're wanting to base their anime on. Um, one second, while Lomo Man has not passes again. What I love about what he's doing and it's uh, it's pretty good is he's when he's going around the building on the pavement, he's still got the lawnmower on because that pavement does of course need its grass cutting. <laughs> when he's just moving it around, he's just still got it on. No point in turning it off, Chris. Between just... patches of grass, it's a waste of time. No. No, you are looking. You, he can't do anything. You are looking for reasons to criticise Lord Mower Man, all right? <laughs> He's annoying so, me, Chris. I don't like the sound. Um, anyway, um, it, do you I mean, say, surely what, the what pavement should... is going to damage the lawnmower. That's the bigger problem there. I think with some lawnmowers, you can pull a lever that brings up the, 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 the raises the blades by a few inches or millimetres or whatever, so it doesn't do that. Well, then he's perfectly with it. Okay, then. So in that case, Dan, what are you suggesting he does? Gets to the pavement, pauses, picks up the lawnmower. If the lawnmower has no, been created with a function turns, to allow turns, him to do turns that. Turns it off so the blades aren't spinning and loud. Because it's pavement outside my window that he keeps passing. <laughs> I know he doesn't know we're doing I, a podcast. I know. <laughs> you you wouldn't also, you wouldn't do that. If you were riding a lawnmower... <laughs> The joy is the noise and the blades. Oh no, this you isn't. Would, a, this you... isn't. I don't think he's riding it. I think he's. I think it's a push one. I think it's a. I think it's a. You know, like a. What are the ones that's uh, out right. in front of you? He's not. He's not riding a little four wheel. Oh yeah, then I'd, I'd. Then he can. He can ride it around as much as he wants. You wouldn't get off to walk around. You know, you'd. You'd. You'd be riding around going. Wee! So you're. <laughs> that's the exact noise you have to make. Like you're. You're. You're criticize. You just. You know. You, he can't. He doesn't have his dream lawnmower. He doesn't have his ride, <laughs> and you're just making it so much worse. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Carry on. Um, so yeah, so that's my. I think we've not talked between between the history of Dragon Ball Z and the word filler. I don't think we've talked about Avatar in about five minutes. So yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but my point with Dragon Ball Z is like that. That's that's where that term sort of comes from. Those days when like some TV shows, kids TV shows, literally had to fill for time because they were waiting mm. for uh, i say kids shows, mostly anime but in this country i'm making over here it was all marketed as like just straight kids shows even if they had more adult content they would sort of edit that out but the, you know the, that's what that's my sort of understanding of it they didn't they, they weren't like scrounging with this ex- for the, for here for for this episode for a storyline do you know what i mean they weren't going oh no we've 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 got enough story for fifteen episodes, but we've been we've had twenty ordered. We need to come up with five filler episodes. No, they wanted to tell this story. They chose to tell this story. They weren't waiting for something to happen and filling for time, which is where right. that term comes from. And I feel the same way about the Steven Universe ones. We we talk about that a lot. They always add something. They may not add like as much mythology as some of the more important like key you know touchstone episodes you know but that doesn't mean they're worthless but it also I mean, can't it, it it can't all be mythology do you know what i mean like it, it no it just can't you that's that's not how it works <laughs> no a hundred percent that is yeah that that is exactly right because because then so, you because then you'd be like i mean it'd be like watching the later seasons of the x-files it'd be incomprehensible 
<laughs> it'd be be quite a lot. It'd be no, it'd be quite. It's it's yeah. It's like a it's like a, a drink made too strong. Like you you just it's. God, give me like some respite from all this mythology because I need to take it in, <laughs> especially on a binge watch. Like it was, it was nice when me and Nadia sat down and rewatched the whole show. This episode, as as much as it sort of like, isn't one of my favourites. It is a nice little. When well, you watch it in bulk, it's a perfect oh, you little stopgap. Like, you do. You we, really do. I don't. I don't know how much like I. I don't know how much you've watched, but so Dan and I are currently. Our next episode of Nothing But Static at the time of recording is an episode where we're watching When They See Us, I May Destroy You, um, and just a, a few other programs and films. And it's like the most intense selection we've ever done. Yeah, like, it's, it's we're have, intentionally... Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. Yeah. Like, it's we're, we're so intense. We're intentionally intense. doing a, <laughs> a, a sort of a Black Lives Matter sort of episode to sort of highlight some 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 of the, that, the, the content people could watch if they wanted to educate us a bit more on, on some of those things. And then we're going to supply some links and stuff for people to donate to things but yeah it's it's really intense we are so we have had to put some like when they see us we've had to watch like me and nadia and the last few podcasts we've done for nothing but static i've described nadia and i binging various shows in very short spaces of time we have had to put multiple days between episodes of when they see us yeah well and, and i really may destroy you is watch. heavy as well I may de- I may destroy you is also really like yeah um, heavy. We're, we're, we've got, we've not started that yeah. one yet. That's the, we're starting that this weekend. I think even even Lovecraft Country. I don't think you can watch too many in a row. Like yeah yeah. Anyway, back to Avatar. So you like this episode as well? Yeah. So I think, but I I, but I just would I would criticize those calling it filler because I feel like filler. You're right. I think you hit on something really interesting there, which is that filler is kind of a misnomer these days. I think people use it for any episode that isn't just dealing with the main thrust of the show but I, I don't see why an episode has to you know i don't see why I don't, I don't see this weird requirement that every episode add to the overall why can't we just have a side side story i don't understand why that's such a problem um and i don't understand why why, why the word filler is used it's really not filler they, they they it's it's telling us something else they're not again they're not like <laughs> they're not sort of buying for time because nickelodeon accidentally ordered 20 episodes when you know when they only had 15 so yeah i thought i just thought that was really i think for me it's the it's the it's the fact that it's it could be because the term itself you could use that term in a positive light i think what gets me is the fact that it's become a a go-to shorthand for negativity like you can have like like i say midnight if you want to use the term filler midnight is one of the best filler episodes of doctor who ever yes like and it's great but it it now it's synonymous with a negative connotation yeah um a lot of fucking big words in that sentence um so (laughs) yeah you know it's more impressive when you don't pat yourself on the back um <laughs> well you know, it, it was it was worthy of highlighting i felt fair enough um so but uh, back to other stuff about the episode so uh, how did you f- so you've already thought that you said that it was really funny uh, and i do i think this episode is probably one of the funniest ones like what stuff sort of stuck out to you because uh, ang's old man disguise i was that cracked me up like how in character ang got and how it got him into the city yeah <laughs> thought that was I great i enjoyed that I enjoyed I enjoyed the montage of them sliding and crashing, and I yes. will admit that it's it's slightly um, it's another big word coming, guys. <laughs> Get ready for this. Slightly juxtaposing um, from last week, where I did, I can't remember if it was the Beatles thing. There was some running joke last week that I was like, I think they just went back to it too much. Yeah, and I was watching that slide montage, loving it, thinking this is going on for way longer than whatever I criticised last week. Yeah, <laughs> but I think yeah. I think they were just. I think what was so funny is one, they did some really inventive stuff because a lot of the best Earth moving stuff was in that, but also like you know the the joke. They they did stuff in a slightly unique way, like when they had you know he talked about being prepared for anything. You know that they're about to crash through with the slide, but you don't quite expect it to suddenly go into slow motion Matrix style visuals. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That, <laughs> that made me laugh. Good. The fact that you you know they're gonna break the the you know the China pot or whatever it is that he, that he's molding, you know. Uh, but it's still funny. Like, it's is it is China made of Earth? Yeah. Is it? Is it? Ch- yeah, like the whole. Well, it's clay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'd be clay, wouldn't it? Be like. Um. I get the feeling it was like. 
you know, it was like that scene in Ghost, except without all the sexual tension. Yeah, and the the dead guy. Is it Clay? Yeah, yeah, without that. Um, so I th- th- so it's probably not really that funny. much like the scene in Ghost. <laughs> no, no. <I> guess <laughs> like the scene in Ghost, famous for the dead guy and the sexual tension, but without the dead guy, and the sexual tension. So without... basically, the inv- just just the involvement of the pot, the clay pot. That's pretty much your basically, only. Yeah, and the, ghost. but even. Even the clay pot was basically finished. So it was like a sequel <laughs> to the scene in Ghost. So not only not only has two destroyed... this time there's no sexual tension and no ghost. <laughs> yeah, but but not only have they destroyed the not only des- have they destroyed the clay pot, but also his his sexy dead friend's gone. So like he's having a bad day, that fella. Yeah. Um, and then these bloody kids in that way. having their bloody fun with their slide, smashing his clay pot. So, so I, I thought that was really funny. Um, I thought all oh, the like the character I can't remember his name, but the 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 character that was obviously his friend, Boomy. Yeah, he had a lot of from like that. I I love that it's that sort of new girl office style of humor. Like like when Suki's like, maybe he's called Rocky. <laughs> like, my my favorite my, fa- my favorite joke with Boomy the whole episode. Like honestly, and I I, I I was in stitches and we paused it when I watched it with Nadia. And when I rewatched it for this, I had to pause it again. It's uh, put him in put him in the uh, in the cha- the chambers the uh, the uh, the bad chamber or the good chamber. Oh, the the, the newly refurbished chamber. Oh, I don't know which one that is. Well, it's, it used to be the bad chamber, but now it's been recently refurbished. So now it's the not so bad chamber. We should really yeah. number. We should really number them. <laughs> like that whole exchange that then ends with when Ang and Katara and Sokka get thrown in there. <laughs> They're like, "This isn't so bad. Doesn't seem like a prison." And Ang's like, "Well, he did say it was newly refurbished. <laughs> it's yeah. such a perfect gag. It's like that whole funny. exchange just had me in stitches. That's my favorite booby joke from this episode by far." <laughs> And again, such a like that's not a child like sensibility in no, humour. No. Like it's it's the same sensibility of something like The Office and New Girl and it yeah, it just uh very much appealed. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, uh, did you did you pick up on uh, the the, re- the recurring the recurring cabbage man? Some people missed the cabbage. Uh, I didn't man. pick up that he was recurring, no. So he comes back in he's in this episode what, three times? Right, I, just, I heard him like when he got the cabbages smashed, and then when he tells them to remove their heads, but they have a feast, feast instead. I didn't get a third. So he so he shows up. Reference. He shows up a couple of times. So he, at the beginning, he they're not letting him in, and they they throw his cabbages over the side, and he goes, "My cabbages." Then when they're in the car, they smash it, and it's my cabbages. And then um, he obviously wants them to you know off with their heads because they destroyed his cabbage heads. And then at the very end of the episode, when Ang and Boomy are crashing around the city, you hear, my cabbages, a third time, which is just, I don't know why, but the third one really makes it. <laughs> it's, the th- yeah. it's that third and final one that really hits the nail on the head of that poor guy and his poor cabbages. Um, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy Cabbage Man. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. It's a good episode. But like you say, there's not there's not a lot to like analyze. Um, no, but it's it's good fun. Uh, yeah, I've got, well, I've got two two things I want to ask you about. Uh, first of all, how, what did you think to the design of the city? So this is our first Earth Kingdom city. Um, I'll tell you from uh, just a little bit of out, you know sort of knowledge outside of what you'll have learned from the episode. This is the second largest. Uh, Earth Kingdom city. There's only one bigger than it, Omashu, um, which we will. Um, Oh no! This is a master. Sorry, uh, Barsing Say. Sorry, um, that we'll we'll come to at a later date. Um, but how did what did you think of your first full glimpse of like an Earth Kingdom city? I thought it was great. I thought it looked like a city that had been sort of created by Earthbenders. Like mm-hmm. it looked like a place that had been kind of dug out, like. Um, mm. And put together that way, you know, it, as well as the slides, the whole aesthetic of it felt like that, yeah. which I just thought was really clever. So mm. yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah, it kind of has like a like an anthill look, isn't it? Like where they've raised the ground up almost, like and created like yeah, that's like a great a... way of describing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always love the design of a marsh, and I think the the idea that like. <laughs> they even make a joke about it, don't they? But uh, great, they get their mail on time. They do, they do get their mail on time because <laughs> of this delivery system. It's very good. Um, I thought that's pretty cool. Oh, well, it does seem like what does anyone in the city do for a job other than get mail back and forth? <laughs> like, yeah, and, and also like. 
they're getting mail. They're not. It's not a system they've implemented for like the world. So they're just getting their own mail <laughs> at speed. <laughs> That's a really good point. And it's, and it's know, not that big. It's a big. It doesn't seem like it's that big a city. Like, it doesn't seem like you couldn't just, yeah. you know, travel for 20 minutes or whatever and get across it and then, you know, hand deliver it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's it's big, but no one's going to struggle. Like <laughs> <laughs> to, to dip a little bit into the uh, trivia before we get there, um, the actual, uh, what they reveal. So there's this thing, I've, I've looked into, there's this thing called Avatar Extras. Um, and it's been it's come up a lot, you know, as I've been doing the triv for these, and I've been trying to figure out what the hell it is. So apparently, Avatar Extras is a thing Nickelodeon used to do, where they'd air an episode but put little bubbles up. You know, like MTV used to put little bubbles of facts up during a song. Oh yeah, it was that for Avatar, but they were written by the writers of the show, so they would sometimes add some extra context to a situation. So, for example, Avatar Extras revealed that Amashu's prime trade resource is making weapons for use by the Earth Kingdom. Um, so the, the the whole Earth Kingdom, they're having their weapons, or not the whole Earth Kingdom, but a lot of them are having their weapons built by Amashu, and then I assume that delivery system is how they're, del- how they're moving right. the stock so, well, around that, the city uh, and then sending it out, I assume. Well, it, even more so, then that makes a whole lot more sense, because yes. then you view the, the city in the context of a factory. Yes. And it... So it's a factory making stuff that makes way more sense. And they're than obviously just, they've got a really good postal service. Yeah, but and, and of course at the moment, like, that, and it actually makes even more sense when you think, well, wait a minute, actually, yeah, when Ang, Katara, and Sokka were going down the slide, one of the first jokes is that there was another slide behind them that had spears in it. Yeah. So that's obviously exactly that. Um, so and and of course we're, we are in wartime. You know, the Earth Kingdom is presumably fighting. As as soccer and uh, Katara's sort of uh, dads, uh, you know, and all the male, the the, the adult males from from the, their water tribe were off fighting the Fire Nation. You've got to assume the Earth Kingdom are part of that battle too. So it makes perfect sense that like they're having to supply regular weapons to 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 those forces. So yeah, it's I, I, it's funny that like even even subtly there is a you know there is a there is a cart full of spears in this episode and you go oh yeah that's funny because it's funny because i viewed that as them trying to catch them the spears i thought that was deliberate but i suppose you're right it could just be coincidence yeah i i always like to think of it as coincidence because i just think it's funny the bad luck they have that behind them behind them is a is a cart full of spears <laughs> like, yeah, that, yeah. like that just amuses me that idea that they're that unlucky but yeah i was it could be either i suppose but um yeah that's like kind of how i saw it and it makes perfect sense when you know that the town is built for that um so the other thing i wanted to ask you about and this one i think was what i genuinely thought your bone of contention was going to be with this episode i was like if anything is gonna i don't think chris is necessarily gonna see it as filler because i i i knew you'd, i had a I was strong i felt strongly that you'd enjoy the comedy in this episode but one thing i did think you'd have a problem with was uh, boomy's plan <laughs> boomy's idea of not telling ang who he is d- d- doing all these weird tests with him and then his excuse for that essentially being well, I need. I want to. T- I want to test him. He's got a lot. He's the. He's going to be the avatar. He's. He's going to be the avatar. He's got a lot to learn. I. Th- I thought I'd be insane for a day and not tell him who I was, <laughs> just to test him in various ways. Um, I thought you might I, find that logic quite, you know. Well, I had illogical. way more. I had way more of a problem with his armpit hair. <laughs> I thought that was some of the most distracting yeah. hair I've ever seen on television. That's fair. I couldn't stop looking at it. I barely, <laughs> I barely took in the wonderful fights. Yeah, because I was just staring at his armpit hair. Um, no, I genuinely did find the armpit hair um, just distracting. Um, but no, because I tell you why. I think they they play and animate him very well they when do. he reveals who he is and bursts Suku and his sister, whose name escapes me, Katara and out Sokka. of. Soccer, yes. sorry, soccer and Katara. Katara, when he burst soccer and Katara out of the crystals, you kind of feel like he was never going to actually harm them, and he was always going to let them oh, go. Yeah, and he's certainly. whimsical but not a monster. Mm-hmm. So because they play his turn so well, you know, and him and Ang have that big hug and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I think between that and the flashback, which sets him up as a character that's just like, nah, fuck it. 
I, yeah. I think they kind of they make that work. It's a little like you know from Ang's point of view. I, you know, maybe the question is more like, do I see a flaw in that, and not more? Only one character seems to be annoyed, which is I think Suku, who says, "Why couldn't you just tell him?" Like, uh, you know, uh, so maybe in their reactions, including Ang's, but then. Ang's reacting like someone who knows their friend well and knows, you know, how they intended it and stuff like that. Yeah. So I absolutely think uh, me, someone could have that complaint and I understand that yeah. camp complaint, but no, it didn't particularly bother me. No, it didn't bother me either. But when I watched it this time, I was kind of looking out for it. And I and the thing that I thought was it's the way it's dismissed in like a line or two that I think might set some people off. Because as you're, you're right, Sokka does. Yeah, I think, I think that's fair. Sokka does say, well, then why don't you just tell, oh, maybe it's Katara. One of the two uh, says, why don't you just tell us who you were when we got here yesterday? And it's like, oh, well, you know, this seemed like more fun. And also I'm, I, I'm, I am I'm was sort of secretly training Aang to think outside the box, which is kind of like... That feels... It's one sentence, and that is not the best explanation for what, how you've no. behaved. Um, so I always... I, 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 They just get away with it, and I think you're right. The tenderness of the hug, the obvious idea that he never really intended to hurt anyone, and also the fact that they repeatedly refer to him as a mad genius, meaning he is absolutely off his rocker. You sort of go, well, I can see a, someone as crazy as Boomy maybe thinking that that, was, that made sense. <laughs> Um, yeah, I th- I think those things do cover it. Yeah. Did you like the the, the surprise turn that he was a a, a muscle bound? Crazy... Yeah, that made me laugh as well. Yeah, yeah. I think they did that very well. Um, I do too. Uh, yeah, and, and that other than the armpit hair, I think yeah. that was fine. So another thing to, to to dip into the trivia earlier about that is actually the original intention was to show um, the earth bending. Um, you know, you don't need to be physically imposing to be a strong earthbender. And the idea originally was that Aang was going to choose Boomy, and Boomy was just going to be this frail old man that was an incredible earthbender. And so when he, when Boomy says, "Oh, that would have been quite cool," yeah, so the, it's it's interesting, isn't it? That like that, that didn't work out. So he was supposed to have the body of a frail old man. The idea being that you don't have to have muscles to be a great earthbender. But they decided he looked cooler with abs. Um, so with that moment when he sort of like frailly holds his hands out and then cracks his knuckles, my assumption is that the original idea was that uh, he was going to outbend Ang anyway, regardless of his physical physical stature. Um, but the, I guess that yeah, as they said, they went for they went for the, the the cooler visual, which is you know he's in ridiculous shape, and that that is a funny joke. But I do kind of, I do love the idea that that you know physically you don't have to be in that great shape to be a good bender. But do you think do you think that you have to have the turn where Ang goes for it and aims to destroy him? And do you think that actually if he'd have been that frail old man, <laughs> you'd have you thought less of Ang? You... <laughs> You'd have thought less of Ang, or yeah. just that that would have changed that dynamic somewhat. Take it easy, Ang. He's a frail old man. <laughs> yeah, I think, exactly. I think the way you could have countered that is by having Boomy make the first move. So he chooses Boomy, but Boomy immediately like punts him with Earthbending into that arena, and you know knocks him about a bit. And then like you don't, then you don't quite mind Ang as much but you, you you always notice with ang and 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 this is something to keep in mind in future episodes his fighting style is really interesting if you look back at the fight with him and boomy 90 percent of it is him either deflecting boomy shots or sending boomy shots back at him ang doesn't do a yeah. lot of of his own offense he is he's uh he's very much about sort of uh sending his opponent's attacks back at them so it's kind of their own doing um like the more they throw at him the more almost ammunition they're giving to him or it's uh, defensive stuff, like he's using his airbending to escape the things sent at them. He's not actually very offensive. He, you know, mm. he's not throwing a lot at Boomy. He's mostly dodging what Boomy's sending at him. Or like when he creates that tornado, the rocks that Boomy throws at him then fly back at Boomy. Um, which I think is really a really neat... Like they've really thought that through. Because he's a monk. He's a, he's a pacifist. Uh, you know, he's, he's not necessarily... You know, he'll fight when he needs to. He'll defend himself. But... You notice there's a, they're very good at making it so that Ang is never the aggressor, um, and and 
it'd be very easy to fall into that trap in a kid's show, wouldn't it? And be like, well, they're having a fight now, so they're allowed to fight, and Ang's allowed to be aggressive because this guy's threatening his friends. You could even explain it, and it wouldn't really. But I love their dedication to Ang's pacifism, and even the first hint of it in this mm, episode. It's played he, very well. He's a he's a vegetarian. He doesn't eat meat, and they they established mm. that this episode, and it's really it's a small detail, but it tells you a lot about Ang. And actually, another small ah. detail. Um, about soccer and Katara, when they first get to the city, they say it's the first thing they've ever, you know, they've ever seen like that. Their first Earth Kingdom city, and there's certainly no cities like that on the, at the South Pole. And you realise how out of their comfort zone they are too, you know. So there's a lot of little, there are a few little details smattered throughout the episode that tell you a lot about the characters. On the food, that chicken absolutely looked like it had skin on. Yeah, I thought that. What was that about? Like, yeah, that didn't look at all like chicken that didn't. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I think it should have been a lighter, a lighter color, a pinker color. Mm. No, I yeah, thought that it, it had, a, it had, like, it had a yeah. real browning on. It. Unless, oh, unless though, Chris, if you took the skin off the chicken and then braised it, you would still get a browning on the outside of the, of the meat. Yeah, that's very true. I suppose when you cook like chicken fillet pieces, they brown, don't they? So yeah, if they if they if they if they cooked it in the skin and then took the skin off, which would be my preference, because then you get the moistness, Chris. Um, mm. But if you've took the if you've taken the skin well, off I'm... pre-cooking, then the, the the then the chicken meat underneath would brown, I suppose. Surely, Dan, your preference is eating the skin. Oh no, I don't like chicken skin. No. What? No, I will well, eat even it. on something like no. If it, if it's like you if, know, if it's cons- like a piece of, I will eat it, but I wouldn't like. If like, if when we have like a roast chicken, and I'm like cutting out the breast, you know, so we can have it on the like with a, with our roast, I don't leave the skin on. Like it, let someone else cut out the skin. What meat? What meat do you prefer? The legs and the the dark meat, or the or the breast? I like the breast. I like the lighter meat. Mate, as far as I'm concerned, you've been eating chicken wrong your entire life. I've just <laughs> learned this about you. I don't mind like, the dark meat. I don't mind the dark meat, but I like. I, I you know what I like about the. You know what I like prefer about the breast is the is the. Is the uninterrupted meat without bone, like just give me the biggest? It's so much drier. Oh well, you're cooking your chicken wrong. Oh, I would contend no, you've no, been no, cooking no, chicken no, no, wrong no, no, all your no, life, no, no. Chris. <laughs> no, like I admit, there are ways to cook it where it can be drier. There are ways to cook it where sure. it can be more moist. But undeniably, <laughs> if you cook the entire chicken the same way, whatever you do, the breast is going to be drier than the legs or the thighs. Because of the type of meat and the texture of it, I think it's because it's on the bone and it's thinner. Like when it's on it meat, meat, mean... meat attached to the bone will always be more moist. That is sure. That is that is true. It does. Yeah, exactly. It does mean that you and I could cook a chicken and be very happy because you would get, I would get yeah. all the skin and the dark yeah. meat, and you would get all the breast. Yeah. So, yeah. On on well, in one in one way it's a positive. <laughs> in in another, I think you're in an the, absolute in, the ev- in the eventual marriage of the two of us that that is is yeah. is when we, when we've both pissed off our better halves enough for them to abandon us and we've left with nothing but each other, then yeah, it's going to be a great old time, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, then when then every <laughs> other week when we cook a ch- roast chicken, we're going to have a good time. Yeah, cool. Um, very quickly, um, before any we, trip? Yeah, the, before we get to the last bit of trip, I just wanted to, I was curious about, what did you, how did you think, because we haven't really talked about the tests themselves, because the one thing I would contend with this episode is, I don't think these are that great a test if your lesson is think outside the box. Um, so I always kind of... You know what? It, it, well, that says to me it doesn't come back. Because if the... if the Oh, I see what you mean. Um, like, the, uh, the, the, he, he has three, he gives Ang three tests and the idea is that the, the, the solutions were not necessarily the first thing you think of. So, like, with the key, the, the, for, the, for as much, you, you know, yeah, don't do the, the obvious yeah. thing of trying to climb the ladder, right? And, and getting Flopsy... Don't do the obvious thing of chasing the rabbit that obviously looks like it would be named Flopsy. Like he's trying to get Ang to think outside the box. I understand that, but I just don't think that's the. There's probably better ways to teach that lesson. I think. <laughs> no, yeah, but he's a madman, isn't he? He's a mad genius. He's a mad genius. Yeah, I guess. The well, interesting how did you, how did you feel me... about the tests? Then, do you think that made sense? Yeah, I think yeah. It's like you, you've just you've yeah. There's it tracks. It may not. The, I'm sure you could think of an infinite number of, of better tasks for that, but you. You just very easily, without really thinking about it, explained how each task encouraged him to think outside the box. So I think it works. Yeah. The more interesting thing I found about task one 
was it felt to me that like a shitload of water like he didn't he didn't go into that waterfall and airbend his way to the top and pick up the key so it almost implied to me that sometimes if there's enough of it uh, a lot of another element will block the powers of another element. Sure. So, like, he couldn't face the water with air bending, which I mm-hmm. thought was quite an interesting idea. I don't know whether that gets extended further, but I did definitely pick up on, like, oh, because there's a shitload of water. Because part of me was like, I thought the lesson was going to be get your friends to help, because I was partly sat there going, why doesn't Katara do some water bending here <laughs> yeah like that that would help um i don't know if she needs her hands for that i don't know but like because uh, obviously they were encased in the crystal bending. yeah she does but, i, I yeah. think she does i think she does need to i think bending often comes with movements yeah but that notion that the the water was blocking his air bending powers i found interesting yeah i think it's just the sheer force of it you know when you're in the water like that it's i think well there was, how much air is there in that space for a start for him to bend um so yeah i think you're right yeah, i think it is sort of making true. a point about like so it's, it was the force of it because it was falling from such a great height and there was so much of it combined with the lack of air once you're inside it there isn't air in so well there's obviously oxygen inside water but not air in the traditional sense you know um so yeah i think it was it was kind of blocky ball because there was none of it around so i suppose it is teaching you that because for example if you marooned an earthbender on a like a metal platform out to sea he's fucked do you know do you know what i mean like it, i think in a weird way it does it does show you that if you can if you can isolate the the bender from the the, the element they bend um that that could be difficult if there was if if you, if katara's out in the, in the desert she's she's in trouble you know what i mean like that that's yeah. so it, it is kind of sort of hinting at that um so yeah, let's uh, let's quickly. T- oh, before we go to the the truth, one last thing. I just really like the line: "There are no take backsies in my kingdom." I just wanted to quote, like, 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 make a note of that quote. I love that quote so much. That's a fun line. It's a good one. Um, right. Uh, so yeah, we've done a couple of the bits of trivers we've gone. So this is the last couple I've got noted down here. Uh, Kangaroo Island is actually um, the name of a real island off the south coast of um, uh, Australia. So there you go. Mm. Very nice. Uh, the initial title of the episode was The King and Aang, um, which we got from that same website we've referenced in the last two episodes. Um, and according to Avatar Extra's bonus commentary, some Avatar fans believe this episode is simply filler, having no real plot involvement, instead of focusing on Aang's po- uh, past. Those fans are as crazy as King Boomy, is what the Avatar Extras thing said. <laughs> I mean, that is, some, that is some bitter writers, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Wow, <laughs> those fans are as crazy as King Boomy. <laughs> you love Jesus. it, Jesus! Like, <laughs> guys, can we have some facts about the show? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Boom. Uh, we'll, I'll we'll be honest with you. We'll tell them. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't read like this doesn't read like a fact. If I'm honest, nope. <laughs> fact. Put it in. Put it fact. in your fact. These Amazon guys are crazy. Thing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, are you sure? Like, What does this tell us about the show? It tells us that the fans are dumbasses. Put it on the thing. <laughs> like, all right. Okay. Weird. Yeah, does that... Now I think about it, that does seem really aggressive as a strategy. I'd but... love it if it's like, according to according to the Avatar, Avatar extras, um, Debbie, who left Simon for Pete, is an arsehole. Mm. Hold on. What's that? That now you're just venting about your personal life. No, 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 no. And while well, we're why is, and while we're why at is it, Debbie an arsehole? I tell you why Debbie's an arsehole because she thinks series one, episode five is filler, <laughs> and she's wrong. Uh, I do like the idea of using it to settle scores. Like J- James, yeah, who pushed me over in, in first grade, uh, called me a poo head. You're the poo head, <laughs> like in the bottom of the screen. That'd be great. Yeah. They should definitely. But I recently, to, um, to, to, I've to recently settle their been... debtors. I've recently been rewatching um, Kevin Smith's filmography, which is a fascinating rewatch for a number of reasons. Mm. That montage, I didn't notice on first watch just how like um, wish fulfillment the the end of Jay and Silent Bob is, where they basically use their money to go around and beat up children that are saying stuff about them on the internet. Yeah, it's great. It's, <laughs> it's so like, good. Wow, that set, really feels set like to the song Kick some, some ass. Demons. <laughs> Oh, that definitely one. felt like, and like the whole thing is clearly ain't it cool news. 
crying, <laughs> which even gets a, like a nod in the credits. Very anyway, good. Good yeah, stuff. Um, no, Debbie, Debbie needs to sort out her shit. You shouldn't. Um, you should just leave people if you don't want to be with them, Debbie. Um, don't don't have an affair and, and sit there in your sorrowed affair criticizing episode five. Yes, jeez. Absolutely. Uh, and the last one we kind of covered, but I'll just re- re- echo it so it's clear. Uh, not that it couldn't be any clearer, but when Boomy tells Ang to always open his brain to the possibilities in life, Avatar Extra states that this is um, the Avatar equivalent of the expression, think outside the box, which I've used multiple times in this podcast to refer to that. They don't quite say it that way in the episode, though. They, they refer to it as opening your brain to the possibilities of life. Um, so there you go. Um, there we go. Another episode, Danny. How, how where are you at with the show in general? You you you, you pumped, you excited? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm excited. More episodes like that. I'll uh, yeah, I'll be mightily on board. You'll be mightily on board. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still I'm still distracted by Debbie leaving Pete. Uh, <laughs> it's upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Wait, didn't I'll she? Wait, board. no. Yeah, wait yeah. a second. Wait a second. Didn't she leave like someone called like something else for a guy named Pete? Oh yeah, I think so. You might be right, actually. Yeah, outrageous. Um, <laughs> that I didn't. I didn't formally date anyone called Debbie. By the way, this isn't me getting my own. <laughs> getting we, my should, own we should. Grievances. We should end this before this gets any weirder. <laughs> um, no, I'm. I'm on board. I really. I think this episode was like a breath of fresh air. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, it gave it gave me the things that I was after last week. All kind of happened for me in this episode. I can see why some people weren't a fan, but I really liked it. Um, and yeah, like I say, a, a good combination of you know that kind of episode and and fire dude chasing them. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So, what if they go back to fire dude chasing them next week? Less happy. No, 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 no. I'd be happy with that. I kind of feel like you can't, you can't really, you can't. Fire dude feels less like the villain if you're only going to see them every four weeks. So I think you kind of maybe have to go back to fire dude. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his name, his name is Zuko, by the way. I know you'll forget by ten minutes from now, but his name is Zuko. Yeah. Um, nah, fire, fire dude's fine though, isn't it? Yeah. It's fine for now. It's fine for now. Um, so, um, next episode. Oh no! Before we get to that, actually, very quickly, I was just going to say um, to give proper credit to the person who who drew the brilliant piece of art we've slapped our logo mm. on top of. Um, Raffo draws, who you can get at Instagram.com slash Raffo draws. Um, also available on Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, all that stuff is linked in the description. So if you come to the video version of this podcast, you can get access to all these links. Or if you go to launchlinks.io slash u slash Raffo draws, there's like a special link page that has everything you can do. So you can go to the Redbubble account for Raffo draws and, and actually order like cups and t-shirts with some of these amazing pieces of art on, including the piece of art that's the base for our um, our podcast. Um, it, 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 it's, but it's not just Avatar stuff. There's loads of really good art, both on the Instagram and the Tumblr. Um, and, uh, you know, have a look through. You, you, I'm sure you'll find some cool stuff. Um, definitely give some credit to the, to, 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 to the artist who drew such a, a brilliant little... Brilliant. I say little. That feels oddly diminishing. This, this brilliant piece of art of the of the, the gang on Appa um, at sun, sunset. It's just really cool. Really, really cool. Um, so there you go. I think that's everything, Chris. I think we've done it. Nice. We've there done we another go. podcast. It's almost like we're podcasters. Almost. Hmm. <laughs> Never quite. <laughs> Has the lawnmower guy gone? Lawnmower, lawnmower guy is gone. He's long gone. Good. Yeah. That's good. Even when he was done, he went down the road pushing his stupid lawnmower while it was on, just down, down the pavement. <laughs> he didn't. I don't. I can't see him. I, I can only see a little bit of where he was from here. Anyway, that's it. We're done. We'll end this before it gets any weirder. And you start ranting about Debbie, and I start ranting about the lawnmower guy. Yeah, that's what they should have done. It should have been Avatar extras. Did you know lawnmower guy should have turned his fucking lawnmower off as he went on the pavement? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That's why Debbie left him. <laughs> <laughs> I like now we've created a whole narrative and a cast of characters. Yeah. <laughs> Lola guy is who Debbie was dating and she she left him for Pete. <laughs> for she that actually, reason. <laughs> she actually left him for a ghost who she uh, fell in love with in pottery class. <laughs> and they make pottery together. It all, makes, 
Oh, it all links. Right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Obviously, you can get us in all the usual places. Uh, we're on Twitter at Nothing But Static. I'm at Dan Doolan. Chris is at C Billingham. You can comment below, like, subscribe. Please subscribe if you can. If you're listening to us via an audio platform like iTunes or Google Play, you can review us, review us in app. It's very easy. Um, the review doesn't have to say anything at all other than uh, it has to exist. You can literally just say, it's all right. <laughs> That's it. It can say that. Mm. It can even say, Why not? this is a bad podcast. <laughs> I, I really don't mind. Just do it. <laughs> review. Um, honest reviews, though. Don't don't go down. Don't, don't go giving us one stars if you don't think it's one stars. Give it, If you genuinely think it's one star, give us that one star. But I don't want anyone intentionally review bombing us now for the funsies because I said it's a bad podcast. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, for although be pre-warned, if you do give us one star and you don't like it, then when we do analyzing Avatar, the late Airbender extras, we will be we'll be personally we be calling you out <laughs> wrong and shitting you on, shitting yeah, on it yeah. exactly. So um, that's everything for this week. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Come back next week, of course, uh, for more of this uh, rubbish, whatever this is. Um, I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billing. We'll see you next time for another episode of Avatar: The Late Airbender. The way analyzing Avatar: The Late Airbender. We'll be tackling imprisoned. <laughs>